and welcome to Even the Trunchbull, our show about children's books and why we still love them as adults. She's Nina. They're Matt. And we think that children's books are for everyone because we've all been kids. Even, Even the, the Trunchbull. Trunchbull. They're all mistakes, children. Filthy, nasty things. Glad I never was one. From Roald Dahl's beloved Matilda, despite her protestations. Each episode, we'll be reviewing one picture book and one chapter book. We're starting off with the books that we read as kids, but if you've got a book you'd like us to review, especially if you are currently a kid, please get in touch. You can email us on eventhetrunchbull at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter at trunchbullpod. And this week we are reading and talking all about puppets. So our picture book is Revenge of the Puppets by Nadine D'Souza and illustrated by Ayush Rajvunshi. And Pinocchio by Pinocchio, but actually by Michael Morpurgo. <laughs> Shall we start with Revenge of the Puppets? Yes, let's let's. So, Revenge of the Puppets is. Um, well, do you want to do you want to start us off, Nina, telling us what Revenge of the Puppets is about? And I was. Um, I already had an idea that I wanted to do a show about puppets and that we do Pinocchio. So I was looking for a book, a picture book about puppets, and this was the best one I found. It's a book by Karadi Tales, which is an independent children's publisher in India and their focus is like creating a space for Indian culture in children's publishing. I, I was just going off the title when I ordered it but I have not been disappointed. Yeah no it is I mean it's exactly in many ways exactly what it says on the cover it is a, a story about some puppets who take revenge. Yeah so what happens is there's this troop of puppets that travel around with their puppeteers. They're Kathputli puppets which is a specific type of puppetry native to Rajasthan. They're like marionettes, so they've got strings and they've got these wooden carved heads and then these really mm. elaborate clothes. I think I've seen one. I think my granny bought one when she was on holiday there because I've got right, a right. strong memory of playing with one because that's what a lot of I'm... the puppeteers do now is they make them to sell to tourists as well as performing. Right. Anyway, yeah. so they're these like very intricate, quite heavy puppets and they take them on tour and they do shows in small villages you know they just like set up like a tent that they can hide behind and then people i think that comes across in the illustrations like it's gorgeous illustrations yeah yeah and it's yeah i think the way you've described them like that makes sense like the the, the get the essence of what these puppets are like in the illustrations really mm. nicely very colorful very bright but very sort of like block shapes yeah. Um, and sort of slightly cartoonish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're doing their job, being in shows, and they start to become, you know, a bit frayed and a bit damaged just from use. And yeah. so the As puppeteers, Byro and Banu, decide to, that they need some new puppets. And so the old puppets watch on in horror as their... Um, replacements get made before their very eyes and they're like mm -hmm. we will not be replaced we will not be forgotten and so they wake <laughs> up in the middle of the night and they sabotage the new puppets they sew them yeah. up wrong they put their legs on the wrong way round um what else do they do they they glue a mustache onto the girl puppet which and is so hilarious obviously hilarious and sexist yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting that they did that with the moustache as well because like body hair on Indian women is like a very big thing you know whether it's queer Indians reclaiming it or like the whole industry behind like hair lightening and hair removal like it's quite a big taboo within femininity in general but I think especially mm. within populations that traditionally have darker hair um, right. it's like a really I guess a nasty thing to do to that puppet. Like yeah. the idea that if she has a moustache, <clears throat> she's ugly and we can't go on with the show. I'd not even thought about it in that lens because I'd just been thinking just from a sort of like gender trans point of view, like, mm. ha ha, this girl puppet has a moustache, which is hilarious and get off, get off our stage. But that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah, even, even more interesting that it's kind of... 
because it seems yeah. it, it seems at first sort of to to my eyes to be like the lightest of the punishments and then when Byro and Barnu go to to put on the new show it all goes wrong because of these sabotage puppets one of the puppets has got their feet put on backwards so he's always fallen on his face and and so Byro and Barnu learn their lesson they repair the puppets they already had and justice is served the sense we get is that they wake up because it's midnight, right? So it's like mm. the the world that's set up is it's the at witching midnight. hour. Yeah, puppets come alive. Yeah, um, the horse uh, Doug do he wakes up at, at, like and he says, uh, "Oh, I had a horrible dream that the stuffing had all been ripped out of my stomach," and they're like. No, Doug, do that has actually happened. That's why you weren't in the show today. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a stomach. And he's like, Oh, I thought I felt a bit empty. I thought I was hungry. Oh, silly me. It reminded us. In 2017, I reviewed the puppetry festival that runs in Newcastle every year. And there's a video they commissioned, like a stop start animation. When it proper reminded us of this, and it's just this little stop start story of these, like, puppets that come to life at night and. Uh, mess about and cause mischief and yeah. I think it's an appealing theme in it, it's a common theme it's a, it is, it's a, it's a nice idea you put your toys aside for the night and then they start yeah. their own life. yeah, yeah, yeah so how do we feel about these puppets being really vengeful upon these new puppets that, you know, haven't done anything wrong actually, they're just there um, <laughs> it feels to me it's it's almost like a story of like a worker's rebellion, isn't it? It's like the Luddites yeah. as the machine breakers. <laughs> because, and again, yes. as, as most of these things in history do, it kind of starts by accident. Like it's just this clumsy mm. horse that's like, oh, oh, I've broken a bit of that. And then they're like, let's keep breaking stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess it's an interesting moral behind, isn't it? Because they, they, it sort of works and they, mm. they get their way. And actually by the end you're thinking, yeah. well, why didn't the puppet makers just sort of fix them in the first place yeah make do and mend and stitch yeah. them up and and keep going um but you know it is it's a work as rebellion isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah i really enjoyed that part of it i really liked like how they were shown to be threatening by like them casting these massive shadows on the walls when they're holding like the sewing needle and the scissors they're like aha here we come <laughs> I mean, the use of colour and, like, silhouette in this book is really nice. You can't have a story about puppets without a bit of shadow play. Yeah. Um, And then, obviously, like, we never see the puppeteers either, which is a really nice touch. We see their Mm. shadows and we see their hands. Yeah, and I, I, I think, importantly, with it being a kid's book, like, the new puppets are never brought to life. Yeah, Certainly for us that would as a be reader, a different They're never story. animated, they're never given names or personalities, they're just the new puppets. I mean, they don't murder them, right? They're just no. like... It depends how you want to play. Either it's like mischievous little tricks or like they've broken their feet and put them back on the wrong, which is horrific. Mm. But, like... Well, this is what we're going to get onto with Pinocchio as well, is that you can get away with a lot of cartoon violence with puppets, and that's often a theme. I mean, yes. like, like Punch and Judy, like throwing the baby down the stairs. It's funny because they're puppets and you know it doesn't really hurt. There's this overriding theme across a lot of puppetry of death. Yeah. Um, which kind of makes complete sense because you're playing with these objects and as yeah. soon as you put them down, you know, any kind of puppet, it's lifeless, it's dead, like yeah. it's only alive while you're literally... And even if you stop moving it, like it's like a shark, right? Like it's moving or it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <Right? laughs> so it sort of makes complete sense that like mm. death as a sort of like subject matter kind of sits in the background of all of that. Yeah. As does kind of like magically coming to life behind the scenes and... Yeah. So we like this. We like this book. Oh, it's great. And just lovely pictures. It's just nice mm. to look at. So this could be, um, for a kid, a like, jumping off point for like a kind of interest in that sort of thing as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I guess, as the publisher is specifically setting out to do, it's a little slice of Indian culture. 
Yeah. So there's an introduction to that. It's an introduction to to puppetry. Um, it's just it's a nice story. Um, what age of kids do you think? Ooh, that's a good question. Probably not your dead, dead little ones. Although, you know, you probably could, but I'd say... I'd say early readers. Five or six. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Pinocchio by Pinocchio by Michael Morpurgo. Yes, because it's a self-narrated tale. Yeah, which is really um, nice. The the narrator of like older, wiser Pinocchio is a really nice yeah. element of this book. Narrating from from his vantage as a hundred and thirty year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to give us a synopsis of his life for people who aren't already familiar from, say, the film? I'm familiar with the Disney film. Mm. I've not read the original. I know you have. Yeah. Um, I understand that this kind of sits somewhere in between. So, yeah. um, Pinocchio is uh, starts life as a a bit of cherry wood in a orchard, and he's quite happy with that. And then he gets hit by lightning or knocked down in a storm, and he's less happy with that. Um, but it's all right. And then a woodcutter comes along and chops him off from the main tree and he's not happy with that at all and he's he cries, he cries and screams all the way home and he goes please don't cut <laughs> which me which is a great image because yeah. you've got geppetto <laughs> as yeah. um dad to be running back through naples with this like log under his arm that's going don't put me back don't you dare get me don't you go anywhere near like get me back where i was um which i just quite like the yeah. idea of like <laughs> people on the streets of Naples being like, oh, you're right, Geppetto, you got uh, another, another talking log there. Geppetto and his wife want a kid and can't have a kid. And he comes back with this log and he's like, this is the one, this is the one. And his wife's like, you're not going to make us a son out of a bit of wood. Please stop doing this. This is putting <laughs> real strain on our relationship. Um, and uh, he does... He does, and as he's working, he's thinking, actually, this is the one. This is better than we've ever gone before. And and it works. And so Pinocchio, the cherrywood puppet, is born and is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a real boy. Except, of course, he's not. Um, he's a puppet, but he's animated. But he can walk and, he's and he alive can talk. And he's sentient and, yeah. uh, and naughty, very naughty. Um, and he keeps wanting to do the right <laughs> thing, and he's wanting to go to school and learn. But he's just he's just dead in a like shiny, sparkly things and things that make nice noises. <laughs> it gets to the point where like his dad sells his one coat to buy an ABC book for him. So Pinocchio goes and buys his uh, uh, school book and then sells it for a ticket to the circus because that's because that's the kind of kid he is right Pinocchio is the sweetest kid he's just like that little knacker that you knew in school who was like oh like you've got a good yep. head on your shoulders just <laughs> stop for a second and think about what you're doing <laughs> he doesn't he's just like I want this shiny thing now here have this most valuable thing that I have it goes a bit back and forth he kind of runs away and comes back a couple of times yeah and then eventually <laughs> runs into the that this cat and the fox basically scam him um, and sort of live off his dime for a bit and then persuade him to plant his coins in a magical town where they'll grow into a money tree. And we can see what's coming a mile off. And actually Pinocchio, as the sort of elderly narrator, is sort of saying to his, like, again, in very more Pergo fashion, is like, oh, dear readers, you'll see what's coming, and I wish I had as well. <laughs> what a little prat I was. So he loses all his money, and then just sort of various other adventures, like he meets his, um, there's the fairy godmother, she plays a part that he comes across in the in the woods, and then with his friend Lampwick from school, who they've always got in mischief with, Lampwick's like, I'm off, I'm sacking this all in, I'm going to go to Toyland. There's a guy who comes around in a cart led by donkeys that's going to carry everyone off to Toyland. And the donkeys are crying, which is The donkeys are crying, and one of them whispers to Pinocchio, like, for God's sake, don't do it. And yeah. the guy driving the cart is like, shut up. 
Um, and Pinocchio's like, what was that donkey saying? He's like, oh, nothing. Don't don't listen to donkeys. Just get on the car. Um, and the, the facet, the brilliant bit with this is like Pinocchio stood on the side of the road and he knows this is wrong. And right up until the car comes, it, like his head said no. His head said no. And then his head said yes, yes, yes. And he jumped on the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and yeah it goes to toyland and then again as people familiar with the disney version will know what happens in toyland is um it's a place for runaway boys where they can play and do nothing and have no responsibility all day every day until eventually they turn into donkeys which pull the carts that bring more boys in yeah. to be turned into donkeys and then sold on um and then eventually all comes good i'm trying how does he get turned back into not a donkey he gets turned not into a donkey by jumping into the sea so right. oh no, he doesn't jump he gets bought by this cruel owner who just wants to use him for his leather and his hide and so yeah. he pushes him in the sea hoping he'll drown <laughs> but <laughs> this is what this book's like um <laughs> and in the seawater turns him back into a puppet and he manages to swim away and escape. Um, we've got the classic uh, Geppetto in the belly of the whale. Um, Geppetto has gone off searching all the land for Pinocchio and ended up swallowed by uh, a whale or in this version a giant, what's it, the massive ugly shark I think they call it. Yeah. Um, and the friendly tuna fish. Aye, that they meet inside <laughs> inside the, the shark. Um, who's like, would you please stop talking so he doesn't remember that he hasn't digested us yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the safety. that's it. So, of course, in my recap there, I've missed out one of the absolute primary characters from the Disney version, who's less of a character in this version, but is definitely a very interesting <laughs> talking point. So, you all remember Jiminy Cricket... Of course we remember Jiminy Cricket. How could we forget His whilst conscience. recapping the entire book? I know. <laughs> so he's he's just called the talking cricket in this. And the yeah. first time that Pinocchio runs away from home, the talking cricket shows up and is like, what are you doing? Go home. Um, and Pinocchio is so angry about being reprimanded that he kills him. He throws a... What does he throw at him? He throws, he throws a, a log at him. Log. Yeah, and he gets squashed against the wall and then falls dead on the floor. And then all of the crickets, like, future appearances, he's a ghost. <laughs> and he keeps making Pinocchio reckon with the fact that he's a murderer. <laughs> so you can see why they left that out of the Disney version. <laughs> but that is in the original, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's how it is in the original. Um, so should we talk a bit about... So I've read the original by Carlo Collodi. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what he's changed about that because it is much closer to Carlo Collodi's book than it is to the film. Although I quite like the little nod to the film at the beginning of the book. He's like, of course, you probably already know my story. It has been famously adapted and beautifully by Disney. Oh, he does. He, how I yeah, he it. just literally says, doesn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. he just name checks yeah. Disney. Yeah. So the tone of the original is extremely judgmental of Pinocchio. It's like a morality tale about what will happen to you if you're a bad boy and you don't listen to your mum mm. and dad. You know, and I think Morpurgo has tried to do a twist on that where it's like an old man looking back at his boyish younger self who didn't know any better. Mm, mm. Um, and he's changed the morality a bit, of it a little bit. Like, it's quite ruthless, the original. It's also much more violent. Mm. So you talk about... The Cat and the Fox, in uh, Morpurgo's version, they're called Highwaymen. Yeah. In Carlo Collodi's book, they're literally assassins. <laughs> and, and they do try to kill Pinocchio by, like, sticking... Well, they try to kill him uh, in Morpurgo's one as well. They'd... Oh, they only they hang, hang him by, by his, by his thumbs, thumbs, though, and the original is hanged by his neck. Right, OK, fine, sure. When's the, when's the original from? 1881. Okay. I think, oh, right, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Because I'm just thinking that's a bit more like you've got the sort of grim fairy tale stuff, but that's a fair bit earlier yeah. than that, isn't it? Where it's the, the morality tends yeah. to be sometimes people die. 
Well, the morality of the original seems to be, if you're a stupid, selfish boy, you deserve everything you get. Yeah. Whereas the morality of Morpurgo's version is, we're all a bit stupid and selfish. Yeah. We live and we learn. He says that a lot, doesn't he? It does. I, I, I mean, Pinocchio's a really appealing character, as I say. Like, I mean, he's got... Um, He's got quite a short attention span as well, hasn't he? Because he can be made to feel remorse, and there's lots of points in the book where either the talking cricket or the good fairy make him see the consequences of his actions, and he cries, and he feels really sorry, yeah. and he really means to do better. Yeah, yeah. But then he just can't. Like, he's not meaning to be bad. I don't think he wants to be bad. Absolute heart He just growth. can't help he's it. Such a, he's such a good kid. It's just... You think? I th- well... <sighs> I think he's quite a bad kid, but I quite like that. I think I think he's a bad kid who's going to be an absolute lovely adult. Yes, and it's the lovely adult who's telling you the story, and that's really, really nice. Yeah. It's also, I think it helps to counter the violence that you've got Pinocchio, the 130-year-old narrator, because you do know he never dies, mm. which at some points in the story you think he might. He gets, you know, he gets hanged by his thumbs until he's almost dead, and then when he's a donkey... Let's talk about this. So talking about yeah. violence, this is what the, like one of the bits of the book that I like page marked, right? Because this is, in terms of violence, this is where for me it's like, oh, that's a bit real. So he's been turned into a donkey, sold off to the circus, and he's got this really sadistic trainer um, who's like, so he's in the circus ring um, and, you know, the trainer knows that he can talk Italian um, so he's like whispering to him and it says the crowd hushed walk on Pinocchio he whispered and then in an even lower whisper do just as I say Pinocchio or you will end up as donkey salami you'll be dried then sliced very thinly delicious with a gherkin <laughs> after that I did exactly as he said <laughs> <laughs> you would wouldn't you so, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's... God. It's, pretty it's a bit real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in the original, Lampwick dies. Right. As a donkey, as an overworked, sad donkey. On um, Geppetto and Pinocchio's way home, they find him dead. Yeah. Oh, God, that, like, oh, that's grim, isn't it? Even darker in the original. But, so those, I think those are the main ways that like Michael Morpurgo has adapted it from reading both of them. He also added a mother mm. for a, a wife for Geppetto and a mother for Pinocchio. And I don't know why he did that. I mean, I'm imagining he's like, let's add more female characters to this very male-driven story. But I don't feel like it adds much to add a mother who does nothing but fret and worry. Mm. Like she's not really, she doesn't go on the adventure in the whale. She doesn't really do anything. She just like serves as something to make Pinocchio feel guilty about. That's one change I didn't really appreciate. So if you're gonna include more women, have them do something. What would <laughs> you know, what would you have the mother do? She could go on one of the adventures. Yeah. Like like Geppetto gets one. Like she could go looking for him somewhere else and do something different. But then um, who's going to do all just... the cooking and cleaning, Nina? Exactly. I think exactly. they can't both go. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, so yeah, I, didn't I really totally, like that. totally take your point on that. Because you've got the good fairy who is basically yeah. the only other female yeah. character. But it's not like they even get to talk to each other. No, Geppetto's mother. It does not pass the And the good fairy. Test, it's never going to pass the Bechdel no. test. Like, just leave her out. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah. I've remembered now that I've opened the book, is the illustrations. Um, yeah, they're really good, aren't they? Who is it? It is Emma chichester Clark. Yeah. Um, what I love, right, is that Pinocchio's always wearing this kind of, like, patterned sort of jerkin mm. um, that's kind of like this wallpaper floral thing. Like, pretty much... Oh, his mum made it for him out of paper, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and pretty much every picture in the whole story, ha- something is, like, floral printed. 
whether it's like yeah. the bark of a tree or the birds. So in the, that first illustration, talking motif. about like the blackbird that's dropped him off, like the blackbirds yeah. are floral printed. And that stays all the way through. And there's just something mm. so lovely about that because it keeps it make-believe and it keeps it childlike. And it keeps it yeah. and it keeps it puppet world as well. It's that feeling of like everything here has been like created and made just out of what we have and we could just yeah. be telling a story with marionettes on a stage here. And it's kind of make do and mend and put the backdrop up and here we go. I just thought that yeah, was that so really clever. Lovely. It's a really nice torch that mm. just threads through the whole thing. Um, and I think, again... Yeah, just a bit of continuity as well. Yeah, but just a bit more of a buffer to some of those violent bits as well, because it's just a very, very yeah. gentle little nod to, like, it's all right, this is just a story. Yeah. We'll get through it. Um, yeah, I really liked that. Um, mm. It's really episodic, isn't it? Like, um, you know, every chapter is a self-contained mini story which i think would make this really good for like bedtime reading that's true actually and that you always kind of know pinocchio is going to get himself in trouble and then he's going to get out yeah. of it and that's sort of you know the shape I of the really story that because i've read it so quickly but you're right it's it's almost like um mm. like when bbc do stuff like merlin where it's like or do you know what i mean one of those sort of like um series sort of aimed at kids or young teenagers yeah where yeah. it's like there is an overarching narrative, but every episode you know exactly what is going to happen. I like Doctor Who as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Like it's always got the same kind of yeah. No, that's 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 a good point actually. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about. Um, so we're talking about the violence, and you know we've mm-hmm. said that this is a fairy tale. I think what's what's quite interesting, again, you know, we've mentioned sort of Grimm's fairy tales and it's maybe slightly more in, in that vein. Like, <clears throat> I feel like a lot of fairy tales, particularly modernised ones, I vaguely f- feel like they're set in, like, Middle Ages Europe. Yeah. And that is painted as a kind of, like, oh, the good old days of kings and princesses and dragons and unicorns and Riding flowers horses. and yeah. like i think like this one really gets across the sense quite well that like middle ages europe like really not a nice place to be yeah like <laughs> but again like tying into like you know we're talking about whether pinocchio is good or not and like obviously he's oh i like bless him he, he doesn't know what's good for him but like if you look at the society that he's in like yeah He's only allowed to go to school if he can pay for it and pay for his books. There's no one yeah. there to, like... Like, if he just runs away and is like, oh, I'm just going to go to the circus instead, it's like, right, cool, well, that's what happens to you then. Yeah. Like, yeah. as soon no, there's as... There's absolutely no social safety net. As soon as he's out on the road, he just gets, like, conned and then hung by the thumbs by, like, just a couple of, like, people knocking about. Like... <clears throat> yeah. It's very sort of, but I guess that is like sort of how the world. The world was. of Pinocchio it, is a cruel place. It is, but I get you know. I think it's not shying away from the fact that like mm. the world is a cruel place without these sort of structures in place. Maybe that's maybe that's the moral. Is uh, it's a bit of social commentary. Yeah. Don't don't underfund state education. Yeah. Um, and make school uniform free. So I don't know. I th- I th- I think Pinocchio is good. I think at his core, he's a good boy. He just he's a child, isn't he? He's just a he's, child. Yeah, he's little. He's just yeah. And he doesn't. He's not been. He's, he, he's not been taught better, has he? He gets given a lot of chances. Like the the fairy godmother is yeah. really interesting. We haven't talked much about her. Mm, yeah, let's talk about her. Is she's less magical in this one and more just like. Almost like an adopted auntie. Like it feels like, yeah. you know, when like your parents have got a friend who then becomes your auntie kind of thing. Yeah. It's a bit like that sort of rule. And she's just... Well, ev- he feels like she's his dear sister or even like a mother figure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which again makes it weird that we've worked in an actual mother. <laughs> which is yeah. further undermining no her rule. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, she does feel like a big sister, doesn't she? And mm. like... 
that yeah that works quite nicely actually because it it's that sort of like oh Pinocchio what you've been up to this time and just every yeah. time he keeps running away from her he keeps like letting everyone down betraying everyone and every time he comes back thinking that it's like this time she's going to be like yeah bless him he always anticipates her being really angry with him and she never really is no she's always she's like, like oh what have you done now so good to see you again <laughs> right really glad to have you back just don't worry about it like appreciate you've apologized tell you what we should do yeah. and have a party all your friends from school can come round. she's like bring him back in um yeah just make things nice for him set things up like clearly he's unhappy let's do something that makes him happy yeah I guess this is another thing we haven't said, which is that he is quite persecuted. He's not naughty for no reason. No, he does. He rebels because he's quite rejected by society. Aye, like, when he first, first goes to he, school. he, like, walks in the street. Yeah. Everyone's laughing at him and pointing at him. Yeah. And calling him a blockhead. Aye. Yeah, yeah, he does feel different and singled out, and I think that's partly why he's naughty. That's true, is actually. to, like, get some positive attention, like, be a bit of a class clown yeah. rather than just teased. And then everybody likes him. Yeah. All the kids like him, even though the teachers don't. Yeah, yeah, it becomes popular by just prattling yeah. about. Because everyone wants to be liked and, you know, yeah. part of, like, part of a group. Oh, he's very popularity Yeah, driven. and his and his way of doing that is prattling about a bit which, which is well, i can understand that <laughs> <laughs> i think that's michael morpurgo's intention to make him that likable he isn't so much in the original and that you know the idea it really is he's a bad boy and he deserves everything coming to him and then when he becomes good in the end his reward is to become a real boy which doesn't happen in this version he stays a puppet let's, which means yeah, he lives let's forever. talk about the ending so the ending the ending's really interesting so you can, as you, I'm going to read you the ending of the original Pinocchio now. So he wakes up a real boy, and there's just this ragged puppet in a chair next to him, and he's like, "What's that?" Um, and Geppetto says, "This sudden change is all due to you. Why is it due to me? Because when children who were naughty become good, it gives a new smiling appearance to the whole family." So that that's the thing. Like <laughs> he's become good, and now it reflects well on the family. So he deserves so a human face. So he gets face. to have a body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's very it's very sort of keeping up with the Joneses, isn't yeah. it? It's like <laughs> if if you behave badly, it if it reflects badly on us. And but I prefer yeah. more Pergo's ending. Shall I read you more Pergo's ending? Yeah. Um, because it, it it's really really nice what he's done with this actually. Everyone I loved in the world was there. I was home at last. Some dreams do come true, after all. Well, now you know the true story of Pinocchio, and you know it was true because you heard it from me, and I was there every step of the way. And I didn't change into a boy at all in the end. Of course I didn't. How could I? Why should I? Puppet I was, puppet I am. And I'm glad I'm not a boy. You see, if I'd been a boy, I'd have grown old. Puppets never grow old. And do we live and learn? Well, in the end, maybe, sometimes. I'm not quite such a wooden head as I was. Or I hope I'm not. My good fairy still whispers to me from time to time, drops gentle hints to remind me that everyone matters. Reminds me always to be kind. But I'm here to tell you this. Puppet I may be, but I'm just like you. Whether you're a boy or a girl. We're all the same inside, and no one pulls our strings, right? That's lovely. I like that much better. It's great, isn't it? It, yeah. it reminds me always to be kind and that everyone matters. Yeah. I think that's it. It's, you know, it's just... Because uh, it's it's not even saying, like... It's not resolving in it. And I learned how not to be... No, a, I like that much better. Anymore. It's much it's more like, of a growth I, mentality. Yeah, like I probably am still a bit of a prat sometimes, yeah. but like what I've learned best. is that you have to think about other people yeah. and that other people are important. And other and... people keep me honest. Yeah. I still need reminding sometimes, even though I'm 130. Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. nice. I really like the ending. I don't really like the ending of the original, but you know, the original is supposed to frighten naughty boys into being good. I don't think that's it's the intent. It's maybe a bit of its time, program. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could... He's, in some ways, he's an adopted child, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. It's that whole kind of, like, where do I belong? And 
Yeah. Um, yeah, he just, he finds his people. Well, some he of them he always had, center. but he yeah. wasn't able to settle into them. Sure. He needed to run around yeah, a yeah. bit and sort of test yeah. things and try other things out. You know, and yeah. for a while he just lives with the good fairy. He's not living with his mum and dad when he goes to school. He's living with the good yeah. fairy for a bit. He's like, oh, I'll try this out, live with a different relative, just to live with a different adult for a while and be yeah. parented in a different kind of way. Oh, I think it's really good for him to go and stay with the good fairy. And it's not like she completely relaxes expectations of him either. You know, she's still like, I do want you to go to school. But, but it is totally that, isn't it? It's like yeah. going off to stay with big sister for yeah. a bit. She's very forgiving of him. And she always gives him a talk, doesn't she? She's like, well, these are the people you've hurt, and these are the amends you need yeah. to make. <laughs> Take some medicine or you'll die. Oh, my God. Do you remember that bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he's, like, literally, like... It's when he's been out, like, getting hung by his thumbs and that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. She wants and him to take like, his medicine, and he won't. On the and so the poor death. bearers come in with his coffin, and they're like, is this what you want? <laughs> yeah, she like, no, no, I'll take the medicine. Display his coffin, because he's like, I'd rather die than eat yeah. that horrible, disgusting medicine. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> fine, sure, we'll order the coffin. That's yeah. a strong move, isn't it? It is. That is a bold <laughs> move. <laughs> Oh, I'd forgotten that as well. Yeah. Oh, blimey, I'm going to have to reread this book. Like, it's I mean, really I've good. I've read it far too quickly. I've read it far too... I only read, read it a chapter like a, a night. Like, yeah. savour it. it. Is pro- that is what it's made for, isn't it? It is. I think so. Definitely. That was episode six of Even the Trunchbull. Thanks for listening. Once again, if you've any thoughts on books you loved as a kid... Or love now as a kid... Let us know, or ask a grown-up to let us know. We're at eventhetrunchbull at gmail.com, and on Twitter at trunchbullpod. Intro music for this episode, and every episode, is What a Wonderful Day by Shane Ivers. And remember, kids' books can be for everyone, because we've all been kids. Even Even the the Trunchbull. Trunchbull.